children are very sensitive and a child might stop to come to church just because someone somewhere made a funny comment. So we need to be careful when we are around them. What are we saying? What am I saying? And love them, you know. Love, love the children genuinely. And they respond to love. They respond to love. They are the most beautiful creatures. They are just there to receive. And what you give is what you receive. Whoever you are, wherever you're watching us from, you're welcome to Beacon Life Church in Nairobi, Kenya. We are committed to shining Jesus' light as we advance the glorious gospel of the kingdom. Our services are on Sunday, 10 a.m., Power Thursday, which is also our midweek prayer service at 6 p.m. You're welcome to log into our life groups, Beacon at Home, Beacon at Work. Don't you hesitate to get in touch with us for the details of the life group that is closest to you. Feel excited to join us on our social media handles to subscribe, like, comment, and follow Beacon Life Church on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Let's now celebrate the Lord with our generous giving. The m -Pesa Pay Bill number is 535471. You can also give through PayPal by following the link on our website, www.beaconlifechurch.org. For cash, checks, and transfers, our bank details are displayed on the screen. Thanks a bunch for joining us today. Welcome to Beacon Life Church. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the service. Hakuna mungu kama we Sema hakuna mungu kama we Kweli hakuna mungu kama we Ewe mungu wangu Hakuna mungu kama we Baba
Mama Santi Baba. Toku Pasifa. Toku Shukuri Baba. Thank you, Jesus. Haku Nalie Kamsa. We are the Alpha and Omega. Toku Inuani. Toku Sema Santi. Kwa Maisha Yetu. Oh, kwa Watoto Wetu Baba. Kwa Kanisa Letu Baba. Toku Sema Santi. them a clap. They have done so well. There are so many things that we can do with the young ones to nurture and to release the potential that is on the inside of them for the glory and for the honor of the Lord. Amen. So our text today is the one that we have been, uh, that has been, that is usually projected there when, with the children. It's Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 to 15, and it talks about children. And we are going to see and what we can actually learn and glean from this small portion of scripture in terms of us dealing with children and how we ought to relate and, you know, be around them. Amen? So Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 to 15, the New Living Translation, it says... One day, some parents brought their children to Jesus. I love that part because parents were engaged. And because we are beaconers and we are believers, we are all parents, we are all guardians, we are all people who take care of children. And like this passage say that one day, some parents, one day, all of Beacon Life Church are going to bring children to Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. One day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could lay hands on so that he could lay his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples they scolded the parents for bothering him. But Jesus said, "Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like this." And he placed his hands on their heads and blessed them before he left. It is obvious that Jesus loves children, you know. We sing that Jesus loves the little children. He loves all of them. Even us big children, he loves us, eh? Sour, sour. Even us big children, he does. He does loves us. And I'm so blessed by the part that parents brought their children to Jesus Christ. It's a big lesson to me. It's a big lesson to us. That as parents, what are we doing to bring our children to Jesus Christ? Amen? We, it is a responsibility that we have. It is a responsibility that we have to bear. Sawa, sawa. The disciples, on the other hand, they thought that then by the children coming to Jesus that they are being a bother. But Jesus said, no, they are not a bother. Let them come to me. Jesus wants to have a relationship with the children, even the youngest one. He wants to have intimacy with them. The same way that he wants to have intimacy with us is the same way that he wants to have intimacy with the, with the children. And as parents, we ought to do that. We ought to help our children. We ought to teach our our children. So the characters in this uh, portion of scripture, we have the parents, we have the children, of course we have the Lord Jesus Christ there, we have the uh, disciples, and then we have us. Why am I saying us? Because it is what we are going to learn from, from this part of the, of the scripture. Cindy. So they brought their children to Jesus, they took their children for, uh, for Jesus to bless them, and it is, it is, it is, uh, it is lovely. Beacon Life Church. Listen to me and listen to me carefully. You see, all these children that are seated here, 
we have a responsibility to always make sure that we bring them closer and closer to God. And it doesn't have to be your own child. Yes, we all have our own responsibilities to our own children, biological children, but all the other children. I'm sure we are uncles, for those of us who don't have children yet. I'm sure we have, uh, we have, we have, we are uncles, we are aunties, we have nephews, we have nieces, we have maybe cousins, we are teachers, we belong to a house of worship like here. We have to be a blessing to the children. Amen? How do we be a blessing to the children? Of course, by teaching them the word of God. Of course, by correcting them when they are on their wrong. By being great examples to the children. Children learn by what we do. You know, if children, you don't just tell children to go to direction A and you're going to direction B. They will follow you in direction B. Amen. The other day I was uh, watching something and there was this man and he was expressing himself and he was saying that he used to read the scriptures with his children but he would use his phone but then he decided he felt no I need to use my physical Bible so he would go and he would get his physical Bible and he made sure that his children saw him so he would go take his Bible physically open it read it has his journal takes notes whatever he has whatever he has uh, read whatever he has been ministered to him he writes it down in his journal and then one day one of his sons came and asked him daddy what are you doing he said i am writing in my journal what i feel impressed in my heart that was one day a few days later he saw his son carrying his bible with his journal seated in a certain chair in the house and doing the same thing that he did you see so we cannot preach a and do b and expect them to do a we have to align with whatever it is that we are saying. Cindy, they do what we, we do. As, slight, as small as you think it, it is, they will actually copy and they will actually do what? They will actually do. Cindy, so we are not supposed to hide the truths that we get uh, from the word of God to our children. Amen? Psalm 78 verses 4 says that we will not hide these truths from our children. We will not hide them. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord, about his power and his mighty wonders. We will engage our children in that which we are doing. When it is time for prayer, we engage with them and pray. When it is time for worship, we engage with them and worship together. When it is time for praying for a miracle, we pray for that miracle together. And when it happens... They also know that it has happened and the Lord does do what? Does answer prayer. And that sticks with them. It is something that is ingrained in their hearts. They now know that God is real. God answers prayer. And you know, it's a lifestyle being created in them. A lifestyle that they need to go on over and over and over and over. Amen. And so I am encouraging us to continue bringing our children to the Lord Jesus Christ. To continue bringing our children to the Lord Jesus Christ. Scripture says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. But the violent take it by force. There's no a time like this where our children are so being violently pursued by the kingdom of darkness. But are we violent enough? Are we violent enough? Or are we just there letting the kingdom of darkness take our children from the kingdom of light are we being aggressive enough that is the question that I'm asking us today are we being aggressive enough let us not just take it as business as usual but let us be intentional in ministering to these children it is doable and we have examples in there in the scriptures Children right now are going through a lot of temptations. Children are going through a lot of pain. They are going through a lot of, you know, they're being bombarded by things left, right, center, everywhere. But then as parents, what are we doing about it? Are we busy with work? Are we setting aside time and being intentional with raising up our children? Or are we letting the televisions and the cartoons and the weird songs take control and take charge over them? Are we opening a gateway for the kingdom of darkness to enter into the lives of our children? What are we doing about it? What? What are we doing about it? 
we need to do things the proper way as instructed by God in the Bible because he has given us instructions. He has told us that we ought to teach our children. Right? You know? We need to keep our children in prayer. We need to teach our children the word of God. And we should never say that they are too little, that they cannot engage spiritually. No. 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 Those cartoons that they sing, and they hear even when they are little, in the same way that they are able to grasp that, they are able to grasp the word of God. Amen? They are able to grasp the word of? So let's do away with the excuse that, oh, they are too young. They are not young. They are spiritual beings. Amen? They are not too young. Cindy, the other side is violent, but the Bible tells us that if we are violent... The kingdom of, of, of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. And so by force, we are taking over the lives of our children. By force, we are not letting our children go down the drain. By force, we are speaking blessings over our children. By force, we speak scripture upon scripture, promise upon promise for the sake of our children. Amen? Hallelujah. Has it been done before in the scriptures? Yes, it has. It has. It has been done before. Do you know the young man, Timothy? You know him? Where did he get his faith from? From his grandmother and from his mother, Lois. Are we mothers? Are we fathers? Are we passing the faith down to our children? Is the question that I'm asking us today. Hmm? In 2 Timothy chapter number 1 verses 5, it says, Paul, when Paul is writing this letter, he's saying, I remember your genuine faith, for you share this faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong on you. I remember your genuine faith, for you share, are our children sharing in our faith? Or do we just let them do what they want to do? Are they sharing in our faith? And by the way, do we know our faith? Are we aware? Because if we are not aware of it, then the children will also not be aware of it. So we ought to be alert and aware and know it. Then we are able to pass it on to our children. Amen? Amen? Yes. So, um, Timothy got his faith transferred from his family. And it will be beautiful for us as a church and as a people to transfer the faith that we have to our children. Amen. Hallelujah. And with, with us influencing our children's faith in Christ, isn't that letting the children come to him? It is. Eh? It is. Cindy. Sour, sour. Then I have another question, which is the part of the negative. Are there parents in the scripture who kind of didn't do well? They are there. Sindio. And you know them. Sindio. Do you want to be like them? We don't want to be like them. Sindio. The person that I'm talking about is Eli. And his two sons. And Eli was a priest. He was a minister. He was in the house of the Lord. But yet, something did not go right somewhere with his, with his children. Amen. Eli was a priest, and his sons were priests too. They followed something in their father, but it is because the Lord had ordained them in their family to be. They were in the lineage of priests. Amen? But it is written that these two sons, they were wicked. And First Samuel chapter 2, verse 29 says, Why do you scorn my, sacrifice and of my sacrifices and offering? Why do you give your sons more honor than you give to me? Eli honored his sons more than he honored God. And this is very critical for us as believers, as parents, as wherever we are, as ministers. Is God really the first place in our lives or are we letting other things take the first place in our lives? Because if we are genuinely having, you know, the Lord first place in our hearts, then our children, they will actually see it and that is what is going to be ingrained on the inside of them. Sindio, sawa sawa. So what are we doing about it? First Samuel chapter 3, 
verses 13. It says that I have warned him that judgment is coming. And this is uh, God speaking to Samuel and giving, talking to Samuel. And he's taking Samuel. I have warned him, him being early, that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God and he hasn't disciplined them. The correction bit that comes in. Eh? And I pray that the Lord is going to give us wisdom on how to handle our children in terms of correcting them and bringing them in the right place. And helping them to grow in a way that is, you know, uh, pleasing to the Lord. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, we have a responsibility to direct our children towards a godly path. If there is need for rebuke, then we will rebuke in a loving way. Sindio. If there is need for correction, then we will correct in a loving way. Sindio. If there is need for encouragement, we will encourage. Of course, they have a lot of potential on the inside of them, so we continue to nurture their potential and we continue to draw that which the Lord has placed on the inside of them. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 29 verses 17 talks about discipline and it says, discipline your children and they will give you peace of mind and will make your heart glad. Discipline children. May we not neglect our duties as parents, as guardians. You know, Eli, he's the same person that brought up Samuel in the, in the, in the, in the temple. And he did a good job with Samuel. But with his sons, somehow it didn't work out. And probably he was focused on his ministry that he forgot that my children also need to be worked on. That some, I need to be intentional with the way my children are growing up. You know, Cindy, are we encouraged that we are going to try? Not, to, not going to try, we are going to do it. Be more intentional with our children. Cindy, uh, leading them to grow up in the ways of the, the ways of the Lord. The disciples, they tried to stop the children from coming to Jesus. I pray that we do not stop the children from coming to Jesus in any way by what we speak, by what we, what we say, or by how we make them feel. Children are very sensitive. And a child might stop to come to church just because someone somewhere made a funny comment. Even us adults. Cindy. So we need to be careful when we are around them. What are we saying? What am I saying? And love them. You know, love, love the children genuinely. And they respond to love. They respond to love. They are the most beautiful creatures. They are just there to receive. And what you give is what you receive. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. So may we not be a hindrance to the children. May we not be a stumbling block. Sema, I refuse to be a stumbling block to any child to come to Jesus. Yes. Amen? We refuse to be stumbling blocks. We refuse to be stumbling blocks. We refuse to hinder our children from coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior over their lives. Amen? And let's not be judgmental over them. And may the Lord really help us. Let's not be judgmental about the way they come, how they come, how they look, but let's embrace them the way they are. Amen? Hallelujah. Are you ready to embrace the children? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Of course, the Lord Jesus Christ loves his children. He loves everyone. Even those who are seen as weak in our midst. You know, he wants them in his kingdom. He wants them in his kingdom. He does not want any one of us to be left behind. He wants each and every one of us to make it. Amen? But at the end of the day, we have a choice to make. Send you. So he's not going to force. We're not going to be forced into it. We have to make our choices. But we also need to help our children in the making of their, of their choices. Send you. If we do not guide them, Hollywood is really going to guide them. If we do not guide them, if we do not help our children... The screens in our house, 
they are really going to mentor our children in a negative direction. I mean, where does someone come? Okay, let me not go ahead. Huh? We need Kwanza Beacon Life Church. We ought to have our own station that mentors the children. Huh? You see the kind of things that Superbook is doing. Those are the kind of the things of, as a church we ought to do for the sake of this generation. Amen? Let's do exploits. The people that know their Lord shall do what? Exploits. In terms of ministering to the children, what exploits are we doing? And that is a challenge to me as well. And to us as a house, I believe. Eh? What are we doing to mentor them? Are we going to just let Hollywood do this and this and this and then teach them wrong and then tell them a man can marry a man and a woman can marry a woman? That that's not what the Lord says in his word. What does his word say? A man shall leave his mother and father and he will cleave to his wife, a woman. Tuamke, sindio? Tunamka, sindio? Amen? We need to work on being a great impact to the next generation. And I usually say it, that there's this scripture that I don't like, that is always, that is in the book of Judges that says, and there came a generation that knew not the ways of the Lord, and that is not our portion, and it will never shall be. Even when we are gone, and these ones have taken the mantle, they are going to continue impacting the next generation, and it is going to go on and on and on in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm finishing. Maliza. And I want us to finish with an exercise. Verse 15 says, And he placed his hands on their heads and blessed them before he left. And I would like us to do just that for our children, all our children. So I don't know where the teachers are, but I want all the children to come here to the front. And I want all the elders, I want all the pastors to come and to lay hands on these children and speak a blessing over their lives. And in the congregation, we also stretch our hands forth and we also speak a blessing. This is a serious, serious thing that we are doing right now. We stand up and we speak blessings for our children. Amen? Are you with me on this one? Let's stand up. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. I don't know where the children are. They're going to stand here. Sima Mehapa. Oh, Lord, we bless you for our children. Come on, everybody, let's pray for our children. If you're able to speak in tongues, speak in tongues. If you know scripture, speak scripture over them. Speak a blessing for our children. That's the least that we can able to do to them. We need to give them the kingdom of God. We need to teach them the kingdom of God. And we ought to do that violently, for this kingdom suffers violence but we are violent enough we are violent enough we have been given the strength we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us we are more than able come on I'm not hearing your voice oh we speak a blessing over our children. We speak a blessing over our children. We speak a blessing over our children. Oh, Ramande Kesha Takadabra Katikedehe. We lay our hands on them today. And we speak Jeremiah 1 verse 5 that says that you knew them, oh God, when they were being formed in their mother's womb, that Lord, you knew them. That you set them apart. You appointed them, my Lord, my God, and my King. 
Rakashete kadabraka tekedehi. Rimanda kadabro kasha taka dahab. Eh mande kadadadadadadadaha. Ribasho toka dabra kate kedededadadadadadadadada. Oh ramande kededesha taka dabra kate kedededededede. Oh the Lord has good plans for them. The Lord has good plans for them. The Lord has good plans for them. Plans to prosper them. Plans to prosper them. Plans to prosper them, plans to prosper them, to give them a future, to give them a hope. I cannot hear your voice. Raise your voice for our children. They are not going to be taken. They are not going to be consumed by the kingdom of darkness, but they are going to be filled with light. That the light of God is going to be shed abroad in their heart. <laughs> Rimande kedere shata kada brakata kada da 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 hab. Mande kada brakasho to kada kada brakata kedere dehi. That our children are not going to fail. They are not going to be failures. They are going to excel in the name of Jesus Christ. They are going to excel in their academics. They are going to excel in their extracurricular activities. They are going to excel in everything that they do. Everything that they touch is going to be excellent in the name of Jesus Christ. That their giftings, the giftings that the Lord has placed on the inside of them. Oh, they are being bathed. They are being bathed. They are not going to be thwarted. In the name of Jesus Christ. They are not going to be thwarted. In the name of Jesus Christ. They are not going to be thwarted. In the name of Jesus Christ. The bad company is not going to corrupt their good morals. In the name of Jesus Christ. They are going to have good friendships. They are going to remain established. They are going to remain planted in the house of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. None of our children at Beacon Life Church is going to be stolen by the kingdom of darkness. We decree and we declare this in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Monday, can I broke a shit? They remain to be established. They remain to be a star and a wonder. They remain to be pesetas in this nation and beyond. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord, my God, and my King. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and we say that Lord you are good. Thank you. Thank you master. Thank you Lord for your love towards us. Thank you for the privilege and for the honor to gift us these children. For us to nurture them. For us to be able to lead them. For us to be able to teach them. May we not grow weary in it O oh God. But may we take our place and may we do it even violently if it has to. For the glory and for the honor of your name. For our children that none of them is going to be lost none of them is going to be lost none of them is going to be lost in the name of jesus christ we have prayed and we have believed amen hallelujah